Right. So darkness versus light. Last week we saw how God brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light, and we went on uh, seeing that how it is in the day deep, and how we have to bring it out before the light, and whatever is made manifest will become light. And now today we are going to see how we can uh, really uh, what are the areas of life that the darkness try to creep in. And uh, let's turn to the main verse and Luke's Gospel chapter 11 and verse 35. Please read Luke's Gospel chapter 11 and verse 35. Therefore, therefore, take heed, take heed that the light which is in you. Yes. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Is not darkness. So that's our responsibility. God, in His responsibility, through by His grace, brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom, powers of darkness, in conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Hallelujah. But here, after coming into the light, the Lord Jesus says, Take heed. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Hallelujah. Take heed. That means be watchful. Take heed. Be serious. The Lord says. Hallelujah. Take heed. Take it into consideration. Hallelujah. That the light which is in you does not become darkness. Amen. And then verse 36. If then. If then your whole body is full of light, your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, having no part dark, that's very important. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. The whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of lamp Yes, as when the bright shining of the lamp Gives you light Gives you light Hallelujah Then your whole body is full of light Having no part dark That's important So every area of your life You have to yield to God Yield before God For His light to shine on those areas so that the darkness will automatically flee. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It will have to flee. So if you, the whole body, full, whole body is full of light, having no part dark. So you should be, uh, you should tell the Lord, Lord, I don't want, I do not want darkness in any area of my life. Each and every area of my life, I need your light to fill me. My body should be full of your light, God. So, what should we do? Keep, hallelujah, exposing yourself to God, hallelujah, every day, to the light, hallelujah. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark. Some people, uh, they have the dual <coughs> role. No, light and darkness cannot be together. But sometimes it happens. Try to, they try to play the part of a uh, child of light and also the child of darkness. Both should not be there. Hallelujah. So we have to be people of children of light and that's why God has brought us out of darkness. We can prevent the darkness from our lives, uh, darkness to enter, uh, from the prevent darkness from entering into our lives. First, which are the areas easily prone? To darkness, how areas of our lives. The same chapter we'll read, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 34. Please read. Luke's the Gospel. The lamp of the body. The lamp of the body is the eye. Is the eye. Therefore. Therefore. When your eye is good. When your eye is good. Your whole body also is full of light. Yes, the whole body also is full of light. 
But, but when your eye is bad, when your eye is bad, your body also, your body also is full of darkness. Is full of darkness. Hallelujah. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is also full of darkness. That's why the devil has in fact invented so many things so that the people can put in their eyes and you know, you make use of the eyes and bring all the darkness <coughs> into it. It's an entry. Darkness. For the darkness to enter. Eyes, your eyes. The Sunday school kids will say, watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what you see. For the Savior of power, looking down before you now. Hallelujah. And they'll also sing two little lights to look to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, the whole body is good. Also full of light. When your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. So that the enemy's entry, the enemy tries to show you things even to Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God says he came in the form of flesh. sinful flesh. Not only flesh, sinful flesh according to Romans 8. So the devil took him to the heights and showed him the, the whole world and its glory. Glory of the world. Promising Jesus to give them all to him if he only worships him. He made Jesus to look to the whole world and its creation and its glory. But Jesus said, Hallelujah, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So, it's like looking at the world and you know, admiring the world. Oh, what is there in admiring you can admire the nature and give God the glory for the Creator. Amen. You can glorify your Creator. Nothing wrong. People, you know, they just, uh, they are sold out when they see things of the world. They are just carried away. Oh, big, you know, maybe big buildings or posh cars and this and that. <laughs> These are all temporal. And this is, we know in 1st uh, John 2nd chapter, uh, verse 15, 16, 17, there the word of God says, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Lust of the eyes, and lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Hallelujah. These are all of the world, and the world and the lust thereof shall perish. Amen. These are the three areas where the enemy will always attack God's, uh, attack God's children. So the lust of the eyes. The lust has, uh, the eyes will always want to take things. Amen. What you take inside of you, it goes and rests. It is darkness. Sometimes people may argue saying that is it, where is it written that you should not watch TV? Where is it written that you should not watch movie? Where is it written? Where is it written? Everything is written in one point saying that lust of the eyes. Hallelujah! See, people were so innocent Tell me this movie, TV, all these thing, things came into the world. They were innocent. <laughs> when all these things started entering the world, people also became corrupt. Gradually, the generations. Not that we have not seen movie and all before coming into the Lord, but after a long period of time. So it was so uncomfortable. And then immediately I felt, immediately I felt, that is, it's not just movie. Some other spirit is operating from behind that. Now I can say the spirit of the world. Hallelujah. 
some spirit, that's why it is entering into people and take control of the people. It's not just movies, somebody is enacting and doing things, no, no, no. It's definitely under the grip of the enemy. Bringing, that's what, in uh, olden days itself they used to say, church, Christians means people brought out of the world. Separated people are called Christians. Amen. But now, the world saw, okay, you've gone out of me, let me creep into the church now. So the world, the spirit of the world, creeping into the churches, creeping into the believers, the spirit of the world, worldliness. If you are truly born again, worldliness should not be there. The spirit of the world should not be there. Apostle Paul says that we do not hold, we have the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now we have received, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Yes, the, from, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things, that we might know the things, that have been freely given to us, uh, yeah, that have been freely given to us by, by God. God. We have not received the spirit of the world. Listen. The spirit of the spirit who is from God, only the spirit who is from God, with the help of the spirit who is from God, we may know the things that are given freely by God. Hallelujah! If you possess the spirit of the world, you will not be able to know God. Amen. Only if you possess the spirit of God, you will be able to know God personally. So the eyes, you have to be very careful how you handle your eyes and how you use your eyes and how, like, you know, for the glory of God. That's what I always used to say. The more you close your physical eyes in prayers, the more your spiritual eyes will be open. Hallelujah. The more you open your physical eyes to the world, the more your spiritual eyes will be shut. You will not be able to know God, understand God. Jesus, he always prayed, prayed, prayed to God the Father. So when, we, when he saw the people, he saw them, with, he was moved with compassion. Hallelujah! The eyes of Jesus we will also possess. Amen! It will have a different view altogether. Amen! Hallelujah! Your eyes should be turned into spiritual eyes. When that praise the Lord, glory to God. See Job in his trials, he says how he has uh, uh, he says in the place how he has made the covenant with his eyes. Please read Job, book of Job, thirty one one. I have made a covenant with my eyes. See, he says I have made covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? Why then should I look upon a young woman? Hallelujah! See, for him also, in the trials, he was trying in all points and things, like Jesus. He says, I have made covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon young women? So, the enemy, he tries his level best and does so many horrible things. Hallelujah, glory to God in the world to corrupt people and the spirit to, to bring in darkness into the lives of people. Amen. You have to make a covenant with your eyes. Some people write interest, hobby. What is that? Browsing. <laughs> Browsing is their interest it seems. It's not a, it's not browsing, it's fishing of the devil. It's a snare. It's a snet. Hallelujah. He catches people with that. If you want to entertain darkness into your life, then that's what you have to do. If you want to get rid of darkness, that's what you have to avoid doing. Amen. You should have control over your eyes. 
We are going in this. That's what I'm saying. The more your mind, you're, you're occupied in the Lord, your eye will be in control. Because you, we are in this world. If you turn this side, there will be an poster. If you turn this side, there will be a poster. There will be an evangelic poster or the city poster also. But if your mind and heart is in the Lord, you will not be affected or distracted or troubled by all these things. Hallelujah! And even Proverbs chapter, 4, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 25. Please read. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. And your eyelids look right before you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Let your eyelids look right before, right before you. David says, Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. How can your eyes always look straight before you? How can my eyes always look ahead of me? Always having Jesus before you. Amen. Always having Jesus before you. Jesus in front of you. Jesus Oh, that's why all the, uh, you know, saints of God, children of God, Moses said, Lord, I want you to go before me. Because this eyes should behold the glory of the Lord, should be transformed. Amen? Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter, yeah, Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 17. eyes will see the king your eyes will see the king in his beauty in his beauty hmm. they will see the land they will see the land that is very far off amen what a privilege amen yours i will see the king in his beauty or in his glory and hebrews chapter 12 we know without holiness no one shall see god so train up your eyes, train up your eyes, hear that self, because I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah! I want to see Jesus. So for that, I have to train up my, my eyes. The eyes of light, darkness should not be there. Because this light, eyes, not only it becomes dark, but it brings in the darkness and makes your whole body into darkness. So the eye is the lamp of your body. So educating your eyes and let the darkness from the eyes leave you. Amen. The next thing is uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please read. Having their understanding darkened. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Whose understanding darkened? Whose understanding? We have to ask. Whose understanding will be darkened? Next darkness, where does it come? In the understanding. Hallelujah! Most of the Christians, they believe in Christ, they love Christ, but they don't understand Christ. Hallelujah! They don't understand Bible. They don't understand Christ's ways. They are still in darkness. Being their understanding darkened, and what happens when the understanding is that we continue to read and we read the read cause for that read. Being alienated from the life of God. Yes, if your understanding is darkened, you are alienated from the life of God. That's what had happened in the Garden of Eden. The, the enemy put off the light in their understanding. Oh, God told you not to eat of the food. No, 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 you eat the food. Hallelujah. Lights off. Then what happened? They became aliens to God. Hallelujah! Having their understanding, understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God, because that's of what happened, you know, alienated from the life of God. The Lord says, if you eat of the fruit, you shall die. The life of God in them left. They were dead. As far as God was concerned, the light of God in them was put off, only their life was remaining. So, they, the life, they were alienated from the life of God 
Because of the ignorance that is in them. Mm. Why the darkness? Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart. Hallelujah. So here, understand, darkness in understanding. You know, very well, very often we see in the second Corinthians chapter 4, we, verse 4, the prince, I was also till the age of 20, I was living as a Christian, uh, you know, Christmas, New Year, Easter, that is all. <laughs> Ignorance, like that our understanding was blinded. That personal experience with God was not there. The, the prince of this, God of this age, blinded their understanding. Now God graciously opened the understanding. Hallelujah. And gave them the light. The light came into our understanding. If you want to please read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 4. Whose mind the God six for it, it is God. For it is the God who commanded light. Who commanded light to shine out of darkness. To shine out of darkness. Who had shone in our hearts. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. Yes. What brought the light into us? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ looked upon us, the face of Jesus Christ, then what was there? Light of the knowledge of God from the face of Jesus. Hallelujah! Shone upon us. That's how the light entered into our lives. Now, instead of increasing yourself in the knowledge of God, people stuff themselves with so many other knowledge. The more you increase in the knowledge of God, the more you come to know the Lord, the more you will be in light. Your understanding will be open and enlightened. Hallelujah! Oh, for the namesake, if you see God, then the understanding is open but not enlightened. It's not receive the full light. Ephesians 4, 18, 17, please read. This I say therefore, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk, that you should no longer walk, as the rest of the Gentiles walk, as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. Yes, why darkness in the mind? Gentiles, the worldly people, non-believers, they walk in the futility of their minds. I would say non-believers are far better now. <laughs> At least they have some kind of, you know, the so-called Christians, they really define themselves as much possible in their minds. Corrupt people, maybe they are doing, but here Christians presumptuous. Though knowing the truth, they continue to live in the futility of the mind. For the darkness to creep into the understanding is Rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of them. Do you have a pure mind? Do you have a Christ-like mind? Do you have a possess a spiritual mind? To be carnally minded is dead. Amen? Romans 8, 6. But to be spiritually minded is, hallelujah, life and peace. So all we, that is why we are people, Romans 12, 2, we know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The first step, the Christian should choose, not only first step, the initially all these exercises you should do. You should renew your mind. So long my mind was like conformed to this world according to the worldly standard. Hallelujah. Our mind. Hallelujah. Before coming into the Lord, it was in the worldly standard. But while coming into the Lord, we have to keep leading our mind. We are thinking should be different. Our overthinking, everything, the mind, the enemy defiles the mind. So you, when you renew your mind, it has to be transformed to know the good, perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Romans 12. Too. So this mind, if you continue to walk in the futility of the mind, some people are so feeble-minded. Because they keep giving room for the devil in the mind. 
they receive blows after blows. The enemy comes and damages the mind. Mind, the more you apply your mind in the Lord, your mind will be strong. Hallelujah. The more you apply your mind in the futility things, futile things, your mind will be feeble. Amen. Weak-minded people. Not stable mind. Strong mind. Easily drawn away from God. Hallelujah. Easily carried away. The enemy will show attractive things immediately in mind will slip away. Don't do that. These are the spiritual exercises you have to do. How in the military they give training, right? Richard training for the soldiers. You are the soldiers of Christ. If you are going to be soldiers without training, what a <laughs> disgrace for God. Amen. Don't do that. You have to be well disciplined, rigid soldiers for Christ. Amen. Disciplined mind. Discipline in our whole body, full of light. Soldiers of light. So, we should not walk in the futility of the mind as the Gentiles walk. That is why that futility or futility means vain thoughts. Vain thoughts. Vain imaginations. Hallelujah. How do I overcome them? <coughs> First it says because of the ignorance, not knowing more about God, applying mind to know God. Hallelujah. The more you receive the knowledge of God, the more light enters your mind. Understanding. Hallelujah. And also Psalm 119, 113, the word of God, our psalmist says, Lord, I hate vain thoughts and I love your word, O God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, even I think the, the missionary uh, to China, he says, uh, how does it name? Hudson Taylor. He says, uh, birds can you know, fly over your heads, it should not build nest upon your heads. Hallelujah. But a spiritual person should say, even the birds cannot fly over my head. Hallelujah. When it comes far off, I have to sense it and resist it. Initially, when it comes, you can shut them off in Jesus' name. But as you keep giving training to your mind, when it comes far off itself, you will sense it and you will resist it. Hallelujah! And after for some time, your mind is fully trained up. Amen! Hallelujah! So don't allow, not um, even thinking about others, all kinds of, you know, wanting to know all kinds of, oh, what about you just that, oh, those people are so curious to know about, you know, others matters also. That also defies you. Learn or seek to know healthy things, unhealthy, defying things, abstain from them. Amen. And Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 1.19, he says, I'm praying that your understanding not only should be open, it should be enlightened. Brightened. Hallelujah. Your understanding should, that's what you should always say, Lord, remove all the darkness from my understanding so that I may know you, Lord. What a privilege. Now people know God like as if the five blind people, you know, describe elephant. One person saw the legs and said, oh, elephant is like a pillar. Another person touching the ear said, oh, it's like, you know, uh, yeah, the sifting one. Another person holding the trunk and said uh, it's like some, you know, rod or something like that. <laughs> so, everybody describes Christianity in different way. Another person, another blind man touching the tail, he said, oh, it's like a broom. Elephant is like a broom. So, only the part of Christianity people know and speak about it. Because of the lack of understanding. Hallelujah. Lack of enlightenment in the understanding. So, the next is... Hallelujah, glory to God. So we have to move on, move on, move on. Receiving light in our mind, in our understanding. And then Romans 1, 21, quickly read. Because, because although they knew God, although they knew God, they did not glorify Him they as God. Yeah, they did not glorify Him as God. Nor were thankful. Nor were thankful. But became futile in their thoughts. Became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Yes. What was darkened now? The foolish hearts were darkened. That means then what should I say? Oh, then my heart should possess the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. 
Why? Although they knew God, what did they do? They did not glorify God, brother beautifully said. All this way, we don't count our blessings and thank God. Not only what blessings, it's not like God giving us riches and this and that, no. If you only sit down and meditate on the cross, how he suffered and died. Only uh, people meditate on the Good Friday. They meditate on the sufferings, no. Every day. The Lord says, do this in remembrance of me. Do this to remember my death. Hallelujah. Jesus wants, yeah. Why? Because the more you remember his death, then only you will have a, you know, kind of, Lord, it's for me you suffered. Every moment you will have a real understanding, realization. Otherwise your heart will be hardened. And, oh, Jesus came, died and resurrected, you know, it will be a history for you. Not experience for you. How you would have, what pain you would have undergone. Hallelujah. You have to sit down and apply your mind and heart. Oh, and keep thanking Him with a thankful heart. Amen. Many people don't do That's what the hearts later on become like brass, like, like a brass, brazen, or hardened. They know that He died on the cross. That's why they can't relate themselves or really feel for it. Oh, show your love for it. We don't have the gratitude for that. It's put off. So every time you have to stir up your spirit and say, Lord, I want to sit down and think on your passions on the cross. Hallelujah. We have to really have the realization, keep thanking God, knowing God and not glorifying Him, not giving thanks to Him. and became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. So when you want your heart to be full of light, Keep glorifying God and thanking God. Let your heart be always quickened, revived, alive, connected with God, overflowing with good things. Hallelujah, not bad things. Amen. Psalmist says, my heart overflows with good tidings. Hallelujah. Uh, the Psalm, uh, Lord Jesus says in Psalm, uh, Mark's Gospel 7.21, Out of the heart of a man proceeds, 13 types of things that would defile him. That should not be the case. From your heart, your heart, um, Psalmist says in Psalm 19, we don't have time, I've seen the right, the clock is right before me and really, <laughs> you know. So, Psalmist says in Psalm 19, last verse, Lord, gee, Lord, let my meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you, my God. The meditation of your heart should be pleasing. Hallelujah to God. Oh, and even in Psalm 63, I think he says, Lord, even in the night times in my bed, I meditate on you, God. My heart meditates upon you. Amen. So your heart's meditation should be, the beloved of your soul should be, Jesus, 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 because he is the lover of your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. So let your hearts be filled with light and not darkness by giving glory to God, always worshipping God in your heart, adoration for God, admiration for God. Hallelujah! And this will bring light into your heart. And also the word of God. When Jesus spoke to the disciples of, uh, who were going the roads of Emmaus, when Jesus Oh, hallelujah, spoke the word, explained the word to them. Their hearts were glowing, hallelujah, burning within them. Their hearts were on fire. So the more you meditate on the word of God, your heart will be full of light. Amen. The word is the light of the light unto my path and lamp unto my feet. Hallelujah. So the word of God, word of God, keep meditate, keep meditating the word of God. Your heart will be full, filled with light. By giving thanks and glorifying God, your hearts will be enlightened or filled with light and by meditating on the word of God. The next thing is, please read Second uh, Ephesians 5, 11 to 13. Quickly read. Ephesians 5, 11. 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them rather expose them hallelujah have then what should you do do not have fellowship with what unfruitful works of darkness whatever works of darkness come on your way what should you do expose them or king james version reprove them rebuke them hallelujah oh glory to god praise be to jesus rather reprove them no fellowship i cannot have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness i can i am going i am drawing myself i am going towards the light and i cannot entertain any works of darkness in me you have to flee from them hallelujah take it what we what it is that your light does not become darkness hallelujah that's what we saw initially so we have to understand rather than expose them for it is shameful even to speak of those things was 12 which are done by them in secret but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light so therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and Christ will give you light arise from the dead arise from the works of darkness which puts you to death hallelujah arise come out the christ will give you light amen and even uh, verse uh, yeah 8 you were once darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of light wherever you are the workplace on the streets in the restaurant or wherever you go walk as children of light amen hallelujah you were once darkness but now you have to understand you cannot have fellowship with the works of darkness but rather reprove them amen finally we'll read one more thing what other things can bring darkness into your life second corinthians 11 3 quickly quickly please second corinthians 11 chapter verse 3 but but i fear i fear lest somehow lest somehow as the serpent deceived eve as the serpent deceived eve by his craftiness by his craftiness so your minds may be corrupted so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity from the simplicity that is in christ that is in christ apostle paul says here I fear that craftiness of the serpent that deceived Eve. Hallelujah. And because of the deception, darkness came into Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. The darkness. So what brings darkness in you? Deception, deceivings. Listen carefully when Jesus was telling about the end time end time signs, he was going on emphasizing and saying that be there be there be there in the last days hallelujah of the deceptions that are going to take place in the last days hallelujah even the you know elect people who are chosen people also will be deceived the deception deception will be to that extent so this deception means deception means it's not like you know cheating it's not like somebody bogus you won't be able to make out hallelujah that is deception everything in the form of god if you read the latter part of the 7th 11th chapter of second corinthians it speaks about the angel of light it speaks about the false prophet it speaks about the ministers of uh, satan taking the form of ministers of righteousness hallelujah you won't be able to differentiate between the genuine people and the uh what to say imposters or uh, deceiving ones so that's why in first john 4 chapter john says hallelujah beloved first verse do not believe every spirit but test the spirit whether they are of god 
because many false prophets have gone out into the world in those days itself. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And how do we know? Verse 6, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Hallelujah. He who knows God will listen to the spirit of truth. Amen. He who is not of God will not listen to the spirit of truth. They will say goodbye and they say, oh, see, this is not the way they should preach, you know, they will say. They want attractive preachings, attractive teachings, promising so many things. Falsehood, you have to be very careful. So how do I define Lord? How do I find out Lord? I'll tell you only one thing, Romans chapter 3. Hallelujah, glory to God. Then Apostle Paul says, Hallelujah. In Christian life, you have to understand that, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Verse 4, the Romans 3, latter part 4. Chapter, Romans 3, 4. Certainly not. Certainly not. Indeed. Indeed. Let God be true. Let God be true. But every man. Every man. A liar. A liar. Enough. Listen carefully. Let God be true. God alone is true. Take it that way. Amen. Nowadays many people look to the servants of God. Nothing wrong in looking to the servants of God. But most of the people they don't really adhere to the sound teachings of God. They start following in their way. They are all half blind or quarter blind or even almost blind having little sight. If you start following the footsteps of others, when they fall you will also fall in the, into the same pit. I would also, don't despise anybody. If they are preaching the word, honor them, but don't follow anybody. Hallelujah. God is true. Every man a liar. Amen. That means all are in the flesh. And when they, when oh, Apostle Paul says, that's what I say. I say, Apostle Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So only when people try to really literally follow Christ, imitate Christ, and emanate Christ, reflect Christ in their lives, Okay, but then to I would say, word of God, follower, if you will follow Jesus, if you follow word of God, you will not be easily deceived and you will not be pointing out at others' mistakes also. We will not be not your job. Your job is not to be deceived by looking unto Jesus, who is alone true, looking to the truth of God, following his footsteps. Amen. If we do that, we will not find fault with people or we will not talk ill about them but we will caution maybe if you come across some dangerous things we will caution about please don't do that like that but otherwise hallelujah remember god is true god is true if you are in that position then you'll be easily able to identify which is not true amen one person said it seems uh, a genuine currency note and a fake currency note. How do you... I, I have not seen till now. I, I won't be able to identify. How do you identify between the both? So it worked it seems. Keep looking at the genuine currency note thoroughly. Looking at it thoroughly and seriously. So immediately when you look into the fake note, you will be able to identify. So you don't be looking into the fake notes. Look to the genuine one continuously. Hallelujah. Automatically you will be able to identify their fake ones. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So these are the things we have to understand how we can avoid darkness in our lives. Deception is the very, very dangerous and poisonous and so many things I can say like uh, uh, it's just because Second Corinthians Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10 just because they left the love for the word of truth uh, just uh, their uh, left the love for the truth, God himself gave them over to strong delusion for them to be deceived, for them to be condemned. So the deception is going to be so very heavy, we have to equip ourselves with the truth of God. Amen. The children of God also, the genuine children of God also, 
may encounter darkness in their lives. And I'll show you those verses alone and finish with it. Psalm 18, 28, one person read. Another person, Psalm 143, 3. Please read quickly. Psalm 18, 28. Psalm 143, 3. Micah 7, 8, 9. Psalm 139, 11, 12, 13. Please read quickly. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. Yes, he has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness. Yes, the enemy has made me to dwell in the darkness. Persecution. Psalm says, Oh, the enemy persecuted my soul, crushed my life to death, and he has kept me in darkness. Towards the end, he says, Lord, you quicken me, revive my soul, O oh Lord. Amen. This happens in our lives too. Please, so 1828. For you will light my lamp. You will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Yes, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. That is hope for God's people. The enemy will try to bring the darkness, but the Lord will lighten the darkness. Hallelujah. Micah 7, 8, 9 and Psalm 139, 11, 12, 13. Please. Do not rejoice over me, my Do enemy. Do not rejoice, rejoice over me. My enemy. My enemy. When I fall. When I fall. I will arise. I will arise. When I sit in darkness. When I sit in darkness. The Lord will be a light to me. A Lord, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Yes, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Because I have sinned against him. I have sinned against <coughs> him. Until he pleads my cause. Until he pleads my cause. And executes justice for executes, me. Executes, executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light. Amen. This hope you should not lose. He will bring me forth to the light. So keep seeking and moving towards the light. The enemy will always try to threaten you to take back into darkness. Hallelujah. Never give hope. Give up hope. Hallelujah. Never give up on your call. Please read Psalm 139, 11, 12, 13. If I say, if I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me. Surely darkness shall fall on me. Even the night shall be light about Amen. me. Amen. Satan, if you are going to bring darkness and put on me, even the night the Lord will make it to light. shine light on me. Hallelujah. See, when the darkness the Lord commanded all over Egypt, only the area where Israelites were, it was full of light. Hallelujah. He is able to do that. Please read. Indeed, Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. The darkness the, shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day. The night shines as for God's people. The enemy will night means, we saw last time, right? Evil, darkness. Oh, hallelujah. The night shines, shines as the day. As the day. The enemy will bring in the evil. The enemy will bring in the darkness, even the darkness. The Lord will make it to shine as in the day. Hallelujah. Mm. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Amen. The darkness and the light are both alike to you, Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. Finally, Isaiah 60, verse, verses 1 to 3. Quickly read. It's a promise. Isaiah 60, 1 to 3. Arise and shine, arise, shine, for, the light. for your own light has come, not the light. Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Hallelujah. For God's people, the Lord says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And if your light has come, the glory of the Lord will listen upon you. Each and every one. Amen. Shall we close our eyes and look to God in praise?